Hi everyone, and thank you for joining me today for Sketchbook Sunday, episode 32. Today I am painting a colorful, quick study of an eye with bright, saturated colors. So to start off, I primed my sketchbook with a layer of gesso to give the oil paint something to bind to instead of the paper so that it doesn't soak through the pages and ruin the sketchbook and ruin any other art I have on the previous pages. And in any video where you see me painting with oil, that is what I do. To mix with my paint on my palette, I'm also using a lot of Galkid. This is a medium that speeds up the drying time so that I can be able to close my sketchbook, you know, in a day or two and not have it smudged to the other page. And yeah. So as you probably know, because I've mentioned it a lot, unless you're watching my videos for the first time, then welcome to my channel. I suggest checking out my other videos, not just the Sketchbook Sunday, because this is a very free-flowing, loose, intuitive process that I don't really try to impress anyone with. It's just for me, just to practice, just to have fun and talk to you guys. Um, but anyway, as you now know, <laughs> I use a lot of my own photography as references for my work. And sometimes I paint from life as well, but mostly I use photography. There's tons of artists that do this, professional, amateur, students, just a whole spectrum of artists. It's a very common method used for painting, especially if you want to achieve a lot of detail when painting realism. There's definitely advantages and disadvantages to using photos as references, like lens distortion can sometimes alter proportions or perspectives, so you have to be careful with what kind of lens you are using. Maybe I will make a video completely separate for this topic, but generally speaking, um, in my situation, there are mostly advantages. For example, I can capture something that I'm moved by and I can paint it at a later time. I don't have to do that right away. I can store a pool of references to use at my disposal whenever I want, and I can also edit them, especially if I'm shooting digital. I can do whatever I want with those references. I can cut something out, place it in another area, completely digitally draw things onto it, and basically map out and conceptualize a piece and just play with ideas that way, digitally. And the goal for me is never to just replicate photos. That honestly defeats the purpose of painting for me uh, regardless of how realistic they might end up looking my goal is just to use the reference as a stepping stone to the final piece which is its own idea and its own thing i never want to just replicate photography i always change the reference into something else as i'm using it and the painting itself is completely its own life force so <laughs> yeah two separate entities for me um, I would like to paint more from life, but unfortunately I don't have models that are willing to sit still for seven or more hours at a time. So using photography as reference to work from is my only option there if I want to keep painting the things that I like to paint. But sometimes I do experiment with painting florals, flower studies from life, and I've also done some plein air landscape painting, which I'd love to do more of, but that's for another day. Um, On to the topic at hand. When it comes to painting realism with really bright, exact exaggerated colors, like making the subject look real, however the colors aren't necessarily realistic, you know, they're just super saturated, super bright, super vivid and exaggerated. It definitely helps to have a solid understanding and experience with color theory to know how the colors work together. However, I'm going to show you a little art hack and a shortcut, if you will, that you can use if you're struggling with that or if you just want a quick way to be able to see all those bright saturated colors and know where to put them while making an image look realistic. So very often I like to map out and conceptualize my, what my paintings will look like digitally and usually this takes a lot of cutting and splicing which takes a lot more work than what I will show you today. The example I want to share with you is a very simple way to use a photo of something realistic and change it to have super bright colors or just look different and you know change the vibe or the atmosphere in, in the photo. So I usually use Photoshop to do all of my editing, but I realize that not everyone has Photoshop at their disposal, so I'm just going to use a website called photop.com, which is an online the lower grade version that you can use, and you can also use the same exact tools that I'm going to show you in Photoshop or other photo editing programs that, you know, have all this manual possibility. I wouldn't you can't really do this with, you know, like Instagram or Visco cam like you actually need an actual software that you can edit on so I'm using a photo that I took This is only a crop of the image just to show you an example But if you want the full image you can download the high-resolution photo available on my patreon page 
So I click the image up at the top and then I mouse over adjustments and click curves. The curves feature allows you to basically adjust brightness and contrast, but in a very specific way with all kinds of possibility. I would say this is the best way to adjust uh, brightness and contrast. Um, there are also individual color layers in the curves. So aside from the RGB, you have red, green, blue, and you can mess with these to change how the colors are going to look in the photo. Whether they're in the highlights, shadows, midtones, it's just a completely wide spectrum that you can play with. And it does take a little bit to get the hang of it. I use this feature a lot and I will link in the description a brief run through that you can read about it because that will explain everything so much better than I can and I'm just giving you the absolute basic idea of it. Um, another thing you can do is to just adjust the actual saturation of the image. And to do that, I just drag the saturation however far I want. Um, whatever speaks to you, get as color happy as you want, but I feel like at some point the image just turns abstract so I don't drag this out too far, but doing this however far allows you to see those bright, vivid colors in a realistic image that you would not see otherwise unless, of course, you understand that they would be there because you have a super uh, awesome skill with color theory. So that is basically it. I'm sure that there's many of you watching this that already know all about this, already know about photo editing and navigating Photoshop and other editing programs, but for those of you that don't, I hope it was helpful. I hope it gives you an idea that you can use for your art to practice with. And as I mention very often in my videos, these are just my methods that I'm sharing. They are not the best or only way to approach art. So please don't take my videos as such. I'm simply one angle in a sea of information online. So be sure to research elsewhere. Um, learn about editing on your own. I don't want to just, you know, <laughs> don't rely on me as your only source of art information. So that's just something to keep in mind whenever you're watching any art tips or tutorial videos from me. But I do hope this video was at least a tiny bit helpful and if you want to practice doing this yourself I do have super high quality eye references and all kinds of other floral references Available on my patreon page for download. I hope you have a beautiful week and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys